fish, fish. On the plug, guys. On the plug, on the plug. Oh, so, oh my gosh, look at that thing just dolphin water. Oh, he's still walking, baby. Sweet. Let's go, baby. You freaking shit. That was so thrilling. Mama said, please don't go. Mama said, please don't go. She said, son, you're gonna die for sure if you fight the devil's war. Well, I don't think the day could have started out any more promising. As I pulled into the parking lot this morning, there were about 10 deer just standing there. It's gonna be a great day, guys. We are going on another cast and blast adventure. You guys loved the last cast and blast we did, so we're going out to do another one. Our goal today is to have a chance at a deer, catch a steelhead, and catch, hopefully, a fresh coho with some fresh spawn. Watch. Oh, that's awesome. Well guys, I'm out here with my good friend Jim today. He'll be joining me on a little cast and blast fishing excursion. Super honored to have him in the boat. He's been a great friend to me over the years. He's been actually fishing with me ever since I first started guiding when I was like 15. So we have a long history together, a lot of great memories, and hopefully we'll be able to add to that here today. Jim's got some goodies here once again. We're gonna have some steaks for lunch. We got some Texas toast, a whole bunch of snacks. It's gonna be a great day. Well guys, the first spot that we're gonna stop at is a pretty popular spot. I'm sure a lot of you will recognize it, but our goal is to get a fresh coho salmon to get some fresh coho spawn. Because usually this time of year, if you get some fresh spawn, you can do really well on it. This is one of the few spots in the whole river where coho are even accessible this time of year. So we're gonna go up here since there's no shore anglers and see if we can get a fresh coho with some fresh spawn. One thing all you guys should just make sure you do is when you come up to places like this with a lot of shore anglers, is always make sure you're respectful of the shore anglers. Give them plenty of space. Don't fish the same water that they fish. I've always had the mentality, if you have a boat, put it to use. But since today there's no shore anglers out here, we got the place to ourselves, and we wanna go see if we can get some fresh spawn. We're gonna come right up here and have prime fishing. Got him, guys. Got a fish finally. It looks like a brown, smaller fish. Maybe a skipper steelhead. What do we got, baby? What do we got? First fish of the morning, though. First fish of the morning. Just a little guy, Jim. Just a little guy. So it looks like a colored up skipper steelhead or maybe even a river rainbow. Well, that's a pretty little fish to start the morning, guys. Get him back. We haven't caught any cohos yet. We have not caught a coho yet. We've seen a few jump, but we have not got one to bite. We've been switching up some different bead colors and some different baits, but haven't hit one yet. So hopefully we can get one here, but if we don't hit a coho pretty soon, we're probably gonna head down river and just start fishing some uh, good steelhead holes. Yeah, we'll try these beads and probably bounce. 
So we had our first strike of this three day adventure. We were not able to land a coho, and for those of you wondering why we would even want salmon eggs this time of year, it's because we use them for bait. We take the salmon eggs, we tie it in a mesh netting, which forms a ball shape, then we put it on a hook, float it down the river underneath of a bobber, and it works very well for catching steelhead, as steelhead migrate up our tributaries in the fall time to feed on salmon eggs. But nevertheless, we had a few other tricks up our sleeves, so we decided to head down river and start fishing through some holes for steelies. Mostly. Sounds like it's been about it. Same. There's a fish. Oh! Oh my gosh, Jim. I felt him jar it through the rod. Oh! Man, he just slammed that bead. I can't believe he didn't stick, guys. Let's see if we can go right back through there. Jim, just about 10, 15 feet out, right where I'm at, right there. Man. Let's see if we can get him to come back here. Like right there, like that. Yeah. Fish on, baby. Oh, jumper, baby. Good job, Jim. We fish bobbed it once, then it came back for it, guys. We're gonna go downstream after more in a fast run. We just got into this run. Jim made a couple drifts through it, and we are hooked up. Yeah, he's he's gonna he's trying to get you by some wood. Pretty nice. I think it's a looks like a male. That dark one. Good little fighter though. Him. Yeah, we're gonna see. Oh, 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 he is not ready yet. We're kind of floating over some timber right now, too. Let's see if we can get him here, guys. Nice, that's a beautiful fish. Oh, 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 come on. Thing is just full of that beautiful stripe on him, too, Jim. Reaching out. We got him in the hoop. We got him in the hoop. What a beautiful winter fish, guys. You can tell that fish has just got some beautiful winter colors to her. Jim, good job, buddy. Look at the spots on that adipose, though. Kind of cool. Great time, Kyle. Beautiful day. Nobody out here, but the fish are out here, so we just got to find some more. Nice job, Jim. Good one. Sun's coming out. Beautiful day. So Jim landed the first beautiful steelhead of the trip, which was a relief. Our goal was was to land an adult steelhead, but more specifically to me, I really wanted Jim to land a nice fish, which he did early in the day, so mission accomplished. We knew the weather and the conditions definitely weren't in our favor for this trip as well. The day before, we had a big snowstorm come through, and now today, with the rising temperatures, there was a lot of runoff and snow melt off, which was flowing into the river. When this happens, it drastically lowers the water temperature, which can make the fish very lethargic. There Therefore, it can equal a very difficult bite. Two for Kyle, one for Jim. Spot. You know, right below the weirdness off for fall, you know, that was a waste one.
this ridge. Jim's gonna sit on top of this ridge. Then I'm gonna go and push this whole river bottom. He's gonna see if anything's moving through this river bottom from the top of the ridge. And I'm gonna go push some really dense, thick stuff. So we're gonna see if we can kick anything out of here or see anything. There are a lot of deer tracks in this thick river bottom. I think they're feeding on some of these shrub brushes in here. So this is looking really good. I think Jim's gonna be in a prime spot. I was watching this small deer bedded underneath this pine tree for about a half hour. I couldn't tell how big it was, so I didn't want to take a shot. But then I kept trying to get a different position on him. This is the bed right here, guys. I, I watched this deer for a, a probably a half hour or more. I was just slowly scanning the area. And then I was just slowly creeping around her just to see if I could get a clean look at it because I couldn't tell if it was a mature deer. I could just see two ears sticking out over top of this log. The temperatures were dropping and we wanted to get up off the river bottom Why we had some light to see as this was a pretty unfamiliar forest. So we got up off the river bottom, start heading back up river and thought we'd try our hand at fishing for the last hour of daylight. I predicted this may be the best time to fish throughout the day as the fish had the entire day to adjust to the cooling water temperatures and hopefully they would be active to give us another couple bites before the day was over. Down. Oh, Jim, 100% a bite. Yeah. I know where they are. There's a fish, there's a fish, guys. Fish on, baby. We got one. I don't know how big it is, but we got a fish. Late in the day here, guys. 
Yeah, it's scrapper, guys. Scrapper. We'll definitely take them. We'll definitely take them. Let's see what we got here. It's a little male. It is a little male, it looks like. It's a little bigger than a skipper. A little bigger than a skipper. Not much, but it's a little bigger than a skipper. He looked like he had some really cool colors. Yeah. He's just thrashing. Oh, there we go. Nice, Jim. All right, buddy. We got a male. That's a male. It's bigger than a skipper. <laughs> Good job, Jim. Thanks for the net. Let's check them out here, guys. Well, what a way to end our day, guys. Just a nice cookie cutter little male, but a good looking fish, nice wild fish. We're gonna get this guy right back in the water. So what an awesome day this has been. Get him back in the water here, guys. And there he goes. Well, it has definitely been a pretty tough bite today, fishing wise, and it's that's pretty common for this time of year. Late November, early December, this can be one of the most productive times out of the whole year to fish for steelhead in the tributaries. But it can also be a very tough time of year, just because there's so many different variables changing with the weather, with the seasons changing. We're having a lot of storms coming in right now. We had a big snowstorm a couple days ago. The weather's going from really nice and about 50 degrees, then the next day it'll be down to about 20 degrees with a big snowstorm. So those big pressure changes can either have a good effect on the fish or they can have a very negative effect on the fish and make them very lethargic and honestly this time of year one of the best methods to use is plugging just because you can get those plugs right in front of the fish's face but Jim and I are drifters we love to drift we love to float fish so that's what we're sticking with oh no it's same spot where you went down a second ago I don't know what that was though it's like right straight behind the motor just where I'm at is the spot it like pulls you too far to the left yeah. getting that snag yeah, like, <laughs> pulling me way over there. <laughs> yeah. What the? Sure. No snag. My goodness. I thought that was a fish for sure. Yeah, usually that's perfect. What, is this running all full of snags now, Jim? Yeah, it must be a snag down there now, Jim. Okay guys, we're going with the chartreuse sack for the win. Last hole of the afternoon here. Let's see if we can make it happen. Looking for a little late action. Late afternoon double here right before sunset. Sometimes this time, sometimes this time of year, the best bite can be right before dark. I know, I don't know why they weren't biting really. My buddy told me that though too. I saw him at the gas station this morning. He was actually fishing above the coffer this morning. He's the guy in the red coat that was out there. Yeah. Just a guy, no, but I talked to him at the gas station. He's like, man, I'm coho, they're jumping everywhere. I can't get him to bite. Yeah. I figured we'd get one or something. Fish, fish, fish. Yep, fish guys. Oh, he's jumping. We got a jumper. Skipper, just a skippy, just a skippy. Yeah. But he's a head shaker and he's a fish. Oh, this is, we're scrapping up a good little day here late in the day. I mean, a lot of times this time of year, guys, for whatever reason, right before dark can be an awesome bite the last hour. That's just a nice little skippy. Oh, look at that jump. This is gonna be a crazy one in a couple years. Jim, double us up. Jim, this is our opportunity for a double here. He's a little dinged up, guys. It looks like a bird, an eagle maybe got him. Some kind of a predator might have got him. That's gonna be a really feisty fish someday after those jumps. There he goes, guys. It's dark enough now. We'll do this. Put that right on there. We'll put a bead bag combo on. Yep, a little chartreuse bag action late in the day here, guys. Low light conditions, start running some brighter color beads, brighter color bags. Got one, Jim? Oh my goodness, what was that? What was that, what was that? Last one. All right, I can see it. Down, Jim, Jim, Jim! Oh! Did that look like a bite? Is it bouncing? Oh, it was. I mean, it was right there, right? I don't know. I hit in the same spot, though. So, it's real hard to say. Got me excited, though. I really couldn't have asked for a better first day of this adventure. We caught a few fish, saw a few deer, and just spent a great day on the water together. My original plan for this trip was to camp out for two nights on the water, but that evening I was watching a big rainstorm build and head our way, so I decided it'd be best not to push my luck, go back, get a warm night's sleep, and have a fresh start on day two, which turned out to be a beautiful sunny day.
like you're late for heaven Like you've been late before, before, before You're looking at your watch, what could you be missing? One thing that I love about coming on adventures like this is you never know what to expect, but there's bound to be some sort of excitement through a learning experience or a success story. There will be some sort of a memory made and you can guarantee that. Well, welcome back to day two. It is day two, guys. I had to help a friend out this morning and run a river charter, so I wasn't able to camp out last night. Plus, we got a pretty good rain last night. We lost a lot of our snow, so I don't think that's gonna be in our favor. We have a lot of runoff coming into the river right now, so the river temperatures are cooling, and I'm assuming that's gonna make these fish pretty lethargic. We also lost a lot of snow in the woods, so it might make seeing the deer a little bit tougher, but we are going to persevere and do our best anyways. I'm gonna start off by fishing and doing a little scouting this afternoon, see if I can find where there's some runways coming across these river bottoms and along these ridges and find a good place to stake it out first thing tomorrow morning. I am really looking forward to this trip because this will probably be the last time I get out hunting this year. So hopefully I can get a buck down, if not a buck, hopefully another doe and put some more meat in the freezer. Okay guys, I'm gonna start off hitting a few really deep, slow moving holes here. I'm gonna start off there, then I'm gonna go to a couple plug holes. This isn't quite a hole I like to plug just because it's so short and so deep, it's hard to get your plugs down in it effectively. But right after this, we're gonna go to a couple real good plug holes. So we'll just take a few drifts here and see if anything's happening. But this is just a really deep hole with a lot of real slow moving water. So this would be a perfect hole to fish in the winter. There's also a ton of structure around here, a ton of logs, so the fish can have some cover to hide in if they need. They'll feel really comfortable holding in a hole like this throughout the winter. Let's see if anybody's home. Fish, fish. Oh, he came off. No. Oh, he came off. Dang it, guys, I had my first one on. He came off. I got like three really good head shakes out of him before he spit the hook. Dang it. Oh, no. Dang it, dang it, dang it, guys. 0 for 1 already here. That's a good start, though. 0 for 1 on a spawn bag. Fish this hole for probably 20, 30 drifts, I would say, before the bobber went down. And the bobber went down right next to a log, so that fish was really close to structure. Okay guys, hole number two, hole number two. I'm gonna throw a few drifts in here with the float first before I put the plug rod out. Then we're gonna try the plug rod and see what happens with that. But this is another slow, deep hole, a lot of structure around here. So let's see if we can hook a fish out of here too. Oh my goodness, that was a bobber down. What the hell was that? Fish, fish, fish guys, on the plug, on the plug baby. Rip the plug, rip the plug. Oh my goodness. Oh, he came off. Oh, he came off. He came off guys, he came off the plug. Oh, he spit the hook. No! <laughs> he absolutely annihilated my plug. No! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What happened? He just fell off. Oh my goodness. Man. My gosh. I don't know how much you guys saw that, but that fish absolutely annihilated that plug. I was drifting a bobber in one hand, I had the plug in the other hand, and that thing just freaking ripped that plug. It somehow came off, started taking some drag down river, spit the hooks. Hooks were all great, so it didn't bend them or break off or anything, so just popped off, but that's a good start. We're 0 for 2. We've hit one on a bobber, one on a plug, but it has not been very long that we've been running plugs that we got that bite. Plug in one hand, bobber rod in the other hand, guys. Living the life, living the dream, baby. Living the dream. Fish, fish, on the plug, guys. On the plug, on the plug. Oh, so, oh my gosh, look at that thing just dolphin wire. Oh, he's tail wire. 
fucking baby and just screaming. Oh my gosh, I still got him. Oh my gosh, I still got him. He's by a lot of wood. He's by a lot of wood, guys. This is a hot fish. My bobber, my bobber's just drifting. I'm gonna have to pull the anchor, guys. Oh my goodness. God. Oh my goodness, look at that fish jumping. Oh my goodness, this fish is just going crazy, guys. This is like a freaking October fish. My poor bobber is so so drifted down into this log jam, it's not even funny. Oh my goodness. The fish is jumping in that log down there, guys. Oh my goodness, what an intense fight. Man, I guess I'm just gonna have to go with plugs. This is a little too much to drift a bobber and plug. Wow, what a fun fight holding that rod. What a fun hit. Okay, we got the bobber rod in. Do a little 360. Oh my goodness, this fish is just going crazy, guys. He's right next to a big log, I know. Oh my goodness, I'm nervous right now. Got him, baby. We got him. Got him out of the log, guys. Wow, I can breathe now. He's swimming up to me, guys. He's swimming up to me. Oh my goodness. He's still going crazy, guys. What a fight. What a fight. What a fight. What a fight. I cannot believe this. I gotta get my net out. I got I brought the little net just to save some space. Gosh, I know we're drifting into some wood too. Oh. Oh, it's a big fish. It's a big fish. It is a big fish. It is a big fish, guys. Oh, this boat and the wind is just drifting me everywhere. I know I'm floating near some wood now. Oh my goodness. Come on, baby. Oh my goodness, what a huge, old oh, big male, guys. A barely hook, too. Oh, I got a bad angle on this fish. I gotta just. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we got him! Oh, we got him, guys. Huge, big male, big chrome, chrome, beautiful male. <laughs> Plug, baby on the plug on the plug wow look at this guys check this out what a crazy hit that was on the spinning rod i was holding that rod in one hand and drifting a bobber in the other hand and that was just the most intense hit well i am honestly i am honestly pretty speechless guys that was just an insane hit on the spinning rod what a freaking fish what a freaking fish but that is so gnarly i am so excited i was so nervous fighting that fish. After landing this big buck steelhead, I really couldn't have asked for anything more as far as fishing goes. I seldomly keep steelhead to myself anymore, but figuring this fish was hooked deep with a treble hook near the gill, I thought it'd be best to harvest this fish and not release it. Plus, I was looking forward to having some fresh fish to go with my venison at dinner tonight. Okay guys, well we have about a half hour before dark, so I'm going to get our fish filleted, venison cut, and our meat seasoned while we still have some daylight to work with. Okay, so with our fish here, I'm just going to take half the fillet, keep the skin on, and get it seasoned for a couple hours prior to when I'll be cooking it. I'm just going to season it with a generous layer of garlic salt to keep things simple. Typically when I grill fish at home, I would also add some Hungarian paprika and a little crushed red pepper, but garlic salt will do the trick just fine. Okay, so now with our venison here, we're going to get some steaks cut and we're gonna get them seasoned out of this beautiful piece of meat. This cut of meat was actually off of the hind quarter of the first deer that you saw us harvest in our last cast and blast episode. My favorite way to cook venison, especially fresh venison steaks, is just to season them with a light layer of garlic salt, a titch of Montreal steak seasoning, and then throw these babies on the grill, grill them to medium rare, and they turn out absolutely delicious. So I did some scouting, got my meal prep done for dinner, and found a really nice looking place that I wanted to hunt first thing in the morning, which looked awesome. There were a couple good rubs, a couple big runways crossing the river, so I was really looking forward to hunting that first thing in the morning. But now, the only thing left to do was to bomb up river and get to the spot that I had in mind to camp, get settled in for the night, and have some dinner. I 
think this will work here guys there's a nice little flat spot up here little sand slope I can pull the boat up on and it should stay perfect all night but what a beautiful night it is it's not windy at all anymore and the temperatures at about 40 so this is really perfect honestly I think the deer are gonna be moving in the morning I'm really excited to hunt tomorrow morning Well, isn't this just a perfect little spot? There's a nice little flat area right up here. I think this will be perfect. Wow, we still got a little bit of snow in the woods, but we lost a lot. There's actually, looks like there's some good sized deer tracks in the snow here too. Wow, look at this, guys. I just picked a random spot here. And it looks like there's all kinds of deer sign down in here. Yeah, there's quite a few tracks. There's tons of tracks coming in and out of here. This is just a random spot I picked. Right on. Might be camping on the spot I should be hunting, but this is going to be nice. I got, I do have a spot picked out that I saw the other day, so that's what I'm banking on. I came up river a long ways and had a spot picked out and that I was kind of thinking about from the other day with Jim. And I'm going to start unloading all of our gear here, get a fire going, get this tent up, and we're going to be making some dinner. Well, we just took off our venison, guys. Our fish has a little bit longer to go yet. Wow. Wow, guys. Just absolutely delicious. We just took off our venison. Our fish has a little bit longer, but this venison is just out of this world. All I did to this was a little bit of garlic salt and a little bit of Montreal steak seasoning. And that is my favorite way to cook venison on the grill. You don't need to do anything fancy to this. I just cooked it so it was about medium rare and it's just absolutely delicious. But what a cool setting this is, man. We got a nice hot fire going. We got a nice hot grill. You don't want to cook your fish too much when you're cooking it like this. I just like to cook it until it starts to flake. And you can see I'm on the pin bone line there. But oh my goodness. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I love eating it hot like this too, right off the grill. It's like absolute best thing ever. Oh my god. You guys. <laughs> Well now guys, it is day three. Day three, 
definitely didn't get off to the best start. So last night I finished up dinner, sat by the warmth of the fire for a while, then I go inside the tent to start up the heater, get the tent warming up, and wouldn't you know, the heater doesn't fire up. The heater doesn't fire up. I'm like, I'm shaking this damn thing. I'm like, it's just start. Oh, I just remember just being like, wow. I looked at the heater, I looked at my surroundings, the wind blowing, the cold settling in, it was about 20 degrees at that point, and I just had that thought of, this kind of sucks, you know, this is, this is a bummer, but you know what, I'd, it was the situation I was dealt with, and the only thing I could do was make the best of it, so I crawled into the tent, got down in my skiffies, jumped into the sleeping bag, and actually slept warm, I stayed pretty warm, slept well in my sleeping bag, until I got up the next morning. I don't think I've ever got dressed so fast in my life as I did when I was in that tent, and it was 20 degrees, pulling up my underwear, but you know what, I got my pants on, got out the door, and we were underway for day three of this excursion. Well guys, I have to say that was a very chilly night last night and I did not want to get out of my sleeping bag this morning. My heater was not working. I stayed warm in my sleeping bag, but as soon as I got up this morning, I was a little chilly getting dressed and getting everything packed away. So I'm warm now, however. I've been working my butt off getting camp packed up here and uh, I am ready for the day to go chase some deer around. Perfect. Look at that. All right. I'm throwing venison. So first, it was the heater, and then second, I got beat to the spot that I wanted to hunt. And what made things worse, which was the ultimate kick in the you know what, was hearing several shots from the spot that I wanted to hunt. It was just, at that point, I'm just like, dang. And on these kind of adventures, it's easy to lose morale and just kind of get down on yourself when you're tired, when you're cold, when things don't go your way. It can be a real difficult mental battle sometimes. And, and I just remember sitting there thinking like, wow, dude, what, what the hell is going on here? You know, like, can I catch a freaking break? But most importantly, what was I going to do to have some success and bounce back from this before the day was over? Good job. 
They swam into a log, guys. All right, I guess that means I gotta go after them. I gotta try to get this fish out. What this has come down to, if we get this fish in right here, then it's time to go hunt. Well, there she is, guys. Just a beautiful hen. That's actually a hatchery fish as well, but just a nice, stocky, healthy fish. We're gonna get her right back in the water here, but it feels good to have a fish in the boat and to redeem herself after the way our morning got started off. So, great start to the day. We're gonna get her back, and I'm gonna hold true to my word, and we're gonna go hunting now. So I landed a fish, and I'm starting to bounce back a little bit. My spirits are uplifted. I'm like, all right, you know, they beat me to my hunting spot, but you know what? I can still catch a dang fish, so that's good. So I come up with a couple different plans for the rest of the day, which I wanted to do with hunting. So I headed up river and got back out in the woods. There's a lot of pressure out on the river today. We saw several other boats of guys doing deer drives and I saw fresh footprints in this little bowl we just started pushing as we came in. We'll see what happens, but I'm not feeling too good about this, honestly. Throughout my life, hunting has always been something I've been passionate about and really interested in, but it's also been difficult for me as well. Pretty much everything I've learned has been through trial and error, and I've never had that nice big buck success story. I've shot my fair share of does and a couple smaller bucks over the years, but I've never had private property or really somebody to take me out and show me the ways. So it's always been a bit of a struggle for me, and it's a continued learning experience. 
Ever since I've graduated high school, I've been a full-time salmon and steelhead guide on the river, and the main season for that is August through January, and in order to make it work as a guide to make a living and build a business, you have to be out on the water six to seven days a week. So I just haven't had a whole lot of time to devote to hunting over the years. And I'm just starting to get a point in my life where I'm able to spend a little more time in the fall hunting, and I'm really enjoying getting back into this sport. It's been really cool to regain my love and passion for the sport and share these raw learning experiences with you guys. I started out the day by pushing a couple low river bottoms and hunting the tops of some tall ridges, but it became apparent pretty quickly this wasn't working out. I was seeing a ton of hunters, hearing a lot of shots, and seeing a lot of fresh boot prints through the swamp as well. There was all kinds of riffraff out on the river, so it became apparent pretty quickly I needed to resort to plan B if I was going to have some success. I just saw a deer bouncing through this thick brush straight ahead of me. Oh, there's one. of the day we've had some pretty good snow flurries the last hour the snow's been on and off but i was upstream a couple bends of here and i jumped a few deer up off the river and i saw them run down the bottom of this ridge for a ways so i backed out of there i walked to the top of this ridge now i'm just going to walk in and see if i can kind of gloss this river bottom from the top of the ridge and hopefully i have a crack at one this is the last night i'll be able to hunt this year so hopefully we'll be able to make it happen Just let it 
it sit, and then we'll go look for her at dark. We're gonna let it sit, and maybe we'll get a chance at a buck here this evening. So very thankful to have harvested this deer. It was quite the process getting up off the river, but we got back to the house, we got her gutted, and now we're gonna hang her. Being able to hang in there, persevere through a few tough breaks, and make it happen on the last day was such a good feeling. Although I didn't get a buck down this year, I was very thankful to now have a freezer full of fresh venison and go into the next hunting season with a wealth of new knowledge. Well, thanks so much for coming along with me on this trip, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any ideas for future cast and blast trips, make sure to leave us a comment down below. I would love to hear them. I definitely plan to do a lot more of these style videos. I wanna do some duck hunts, some grouse hunts, definitely more deer hunts. And like I said, any ideas, drop us a comment. But now we're gonna get her skinned out, we're gonna get her quartered, get her processed, and show you how much wild meat we harvest off these animals. So let's get started. So one of the most important things when you're skinning your own animals is you want to try to keep all the hair off your meat. So as I skin this deer, I'm going to start from the neck, I'm going to work my way down and try to keep all the hair from falling off onto the meat. Okay guys, we got her skinned out. Now I'm gonna show you the different cuts of meat and the different quarters that we're gonna take off this deer here. So we're gonna start with our next section. This is gonna make for a great roast, great stew material, or even burger. Then we're gonna go down here, and these are the upper loins or back strap. And this is one of the best parts on the deer next to the inner loins. But this is just great steak material. Then we're gonna rotate over here. This is her front shoulder, her front quarter. Now this is gonna have a couple good steaks in it, some good burger, some good stew material. And then we're gonna come down here to her hind quarters. Now these hind quarters or hams are gonna have some really nice cuts of steak, some stews, some roasts, just really nice muscles and nice cuts of meat. Then we're gonna come up to a rib cage here, guys. I'm gonna shave off as much meat as I can off a rib cage, and we're just gonna put it in the pot to go to burger. We're gonna make jerky, we're gonna make sausage, all kinds of good stuff out of it. So I'm gonna get busy, I'm gonna start quartering out, then we're gonna take her inside, I'm gonna show you all the different cuts of meat from there. Okay guys, so this is one front quarter here. We have her neck roast off. This is one of her front quarters. We're gonna get the other front quarter off. Then we're gonna get her back straps and then the hind quarters. Well, we have one back strap off here. This is one of my favorite parts of the deer next to the inner loins. This is a great piece of meat for some steaks. My favorite way to cook this part of the meat is just to slice it up in about a quarter to half inch steaks, season it up in just a little bit of garlic salt and put it fresh on the grill. You cannot beat that. And last but not least, we have our hind quarters or our hams. Now guys, we're gonna take all these cuts of meat inside and we're gonna start divvying them up and separating them. Okay, so we are back in the kitchen. We have all of our chunks of meat here. I'm gonna show you how I like to process these quarters into usable sizes of meat, but first I'm gonna show you what Maggie's got going on. She's getting her blade sharpened up here. Okay, well that feels perfect guys. That should get the job done. So like Kyle said, he's gonna finish processing the rest of that deer, and while he does that, I'm going to be grinding up a bunch of burger meat. We love burger meat around here. We use it in all kinds of different recipes and snack recipes, including like meatloaf, spaghetti, hamburgers. I mean, the list goes on and on. And that's one of the benefits of harvesting your own game and processing your own meat. 
is that you really get to take full advantage of the clean, lean meat that you get off of these animals. And we love to do exactly that here in our kitchen. So we're just grinding up some of this meat for burger. This is kind of all those extra random pieces from the rib cage and some of those tougher cuts of meat that we can't really use for steaks or stews or anything like that. Like Kyle said earlier, we might also mix it in with just a bit of actual ground beef. That way we can make it into hamburgers and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but um, Dipsy, she's a very big fan of venison yeah, night. Yeah, she keeps trying to steal the <sighs> raw bits. <laughs> Are you a fan of venison night, huh? Are you a fan of venison night? She's very, very proud of her daddy's deer. So now we're just gonna grind up some of our burger meat. These are some of those random pieces of meat from rib cage, really tendony pieces that we can't really use for stews or they wouldn't be great steaks either. It's just as a bit tougher meat. So what we like to do is we grind it up and then I actually cut beef suet into it, which is just fat from cows, and it gives it that really delicious, like beefy flavor that most people are used to. And we have a ton of this still to do, but if you guys look over here, <laughs> We have done a bunch already. We have some in the freezer and we'll be eating it all throughout the year until next year's season. So I'm gonna get started. <laughs> Well, we're starting with the hindquarters here, guys, and this is one of the funnest quarters to process, in my opinion. You can see all these different muscles here. All these different muscles are separated. So when you guys are processing your own venison, and if you haven't done it before, it's really self-explanatory. You can see how all, all these different muscles are just separated, and you just use your knife. You don't force anything, and you just use your knife to slowly peel back these different cuts of meat, and you'll have a bunch of different sections here. We already did the first hindquarter, and right here we have a couple good stew pieces. Like These are gonna be great for stews. This is a little tougher meat. You could also grind this up into burger and we have some good steak cuts here. Another couple stews such as like the London broil and stuff like that. Some really top quality cuts of meat. Okay. okay. We'll check out this big hunk of meat guys. This is going to make a delicious Delicious venison stew, venison roast. You could even grind it up into burger, make some jerky, summer sausage, whatever you'd like out of it, but this is a great cut of meat here. You can see too in this cut of meat here, guys, it's actually separated by some tendons, and that's why we're using this for venison roast, just by all these, all the tendon and sinew in it. So that's why we're gonna make this into a roast, is because we'll be able to just slow cook it at a low temperature for a long time, and this chunk of meat will turn into a very, very tender and delicious chunk of venison. Well, this has always been one of my favorite parts about hunting and harvesting an animal. It's all about the experience and bringing home fresh, wild, lean meats for your families. Now check out all this meat we have here, guys. Just some beautiful meats right here. These are our two back straps. I'm gonna slice these up in probably quarter size and I'm gonna freeze those. I'm gonna freeze them just like this with the sinew on them, just so it helps keep that meat nice and tender and juicy for when we take it out of the freezer. But right here we have a bunch of good rolls. These are gonna make some these are gonna make some delicious roasts, some delicious stews. All this meat here is some steaks, like this is a good chunk of steak. We're gonna freeze all this meat just like this, and then once we take it out of the freezer, we're gonna trim it up a little bit more, obviously. But this is a big pile of burger that Maggie just got done grinding up. We actually have a ton of burger right here. This is actually part of the other deer that you saw us harvest in our last cast and blast video. And this is a little bit of meat that we still have to grind up. So this is just what it's all about right here, guys. This is one of my favorite parts about hunting harvesting an animal and just respecting the animal and being able to take full advantage of its nice beautiful clean lean meats and I just cannot wait to just enjoy this all throughout the winter spring summer until we can get back out there next year and do the same dang thing 
there are just a couple more things that I wanted to say and that is one a big thank you to everyone who has supported this channel and has supported us through our guide service we really appreciate the support guys whether you book a trip with us or just do simple things like hit the like button on every video leave us a nice comment we love to hear from you guys and we really appreciate all your support so from the bottom of my heart thank you very very much and one last thing, if you guys would like to check out any of our new apparel or any of our new products, you can go to our store and check out our online store if you'd like to order some of our gear. But until next time, good luck to everyone on the water or in the woods. I wish you guys the best and I'll see you back here next week in our next episode.